What's going on everybody? So setting up a rotary for your machine doesn't have to be hard, especially with the built-in features that Lightburn has to offer. So we're gonna set up one today on the Omni One from Commarker and using the Pyburn Grip Rotary, which is my rotary of choice. So let's get into it. All right, to do this, you're gonna need a couple of tools. So let's go through them. One, you're gonna need a cup or, or some type of object, something that you can put on your rotary and you can measure it. So that way we can see that it makes a full turn. Um, and then I've got a flexible tape measure or you can also use a set of calipers. <clears throat> I've also got some blue tape and a Sharpie. So really blue tape, masking tape, something that you can mark so that way you can put a little dot on your cup and so you can see it. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's hop over to the laser and I'll start showing you the procedure that we're gonna do. So when you're setting up a chuck rotary, one of the first things that you need to do is you need to know the diameter of what you're working with. So I've got my cup here or diameter or circumference. So I've got my cup here and I'm using my calipers to find the widest area of this cup. So I kind of roll it around here just to make sure I'm getting the widest part. And it looks like I am 100 millimeters and it's 0.81. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that in light burn to set this up. All right, so in Lightburn, we're gonna jump over and we are going to click our little rotary button here, or it's also underneath the laser tools up over here. So I am going to pick Chuck here, because that's what we're working with. We've got it enabled. And then the other thing that's here, we've got steps per rotation. This is what we're gonna figure out. So I'm gonna hurry and change this. So that way you don't know what it is, even though you already saw it. Um, and then here are the things that we need to put in. So object diameter, I have that, and circumference. These are tied together. So if you measured the circumference with like a flexible tape measure, you could put that in here. We're gonna use the object diameter, which was 100.81. So that is the diameter of my cup. And then the rest of this stuff doesn't matter yet. So we're gonna go ahead and say okay, just because I wanna make sure that it's saved. We're gonna go into it again, and it's still got all these settings here. So one thing I wanna talk about is this test button here. So for a chuck rotary, this test button is going to make sure that the object or the head turns one full rotation, stops, and then comes back. If you're doing this on a roller, it is going to turn your roller one full rotation and then come back, not the object that's on it. So that's important to know if you're doing a roller, it's different. The chuck, it's gonna move the whole thing and I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, so you can see I have my cup already chucked in here and it is ready to roll. So what I'm gonna do, so that way I can test and make sure that everything is correct, is I'm going to use the red dot from the laser. So this is the alignment lasers that are coming down, but it doesn't matter. Nothing is set in stone yet. All I wanna do is just have a reference spot. And so this red dot is going to be my reference spot. So I'm gonna be able to go ahead and put this piece of blue tape down And then I'm gonna grab my Sharpie and I want to go ahead and make a mark basically right into that dot. So that way I can see whether it rolls all the way around and comes back to that or not. So now you remember that we, we put our settings in and we talked about that test button. Granted, most of the manufacturers of rotary should give you some rough steps to go by but if you needed to test, this is how you would do it. So I have mine set up right now at 5,000 steps per rotation, which I know is wrong. It's gonna end up coming up short. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click that test button and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead, press the test button. 
and you see that rolls and it looks like it only went about a quarter of the way. So if I go ahead and now I'm gonna say, you know what, if it only went a quarter of the way, I'm gonna to go to 10,000 steps and see where I'm at there. So again, showing you, I updated my steps here to 10,000. Get that out of the way. And now I'm gonna press the test button again and we're gonna watch and see what happens. So test. Okay, now I'm much farther. I, I, I almost made a full rotation. It looks like maybe I was um, maybe a quarter of the way short, probably even less than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, 1200 steps per rotation. And now I'm gonna hit that test button again. Okay, pretty dang close. So I'm gonna go and say 1200 uh, so 12,000, let's do 300 steps. And then we press test again. Oh, getting pretty dang close. And so now you can see as we work through, and just to show you the screen again, you know, I had put 12,300 steps. And I continue to press this test button as we go through. If you are seeing that your rotary is coming up short, you want to increase this. If your rotary is going too far, you want to decrease it. So let's show you an example of it running too far. I'll update this to 1400 steps and then we'll look and see what it does. So updating to 1400, or sorry, 14,000, and we'll hit test. And you can see now it went too far. So I'm less than 14,000, but more than 12,000. Granted, I do know because I've already done it and I've also looked at the stepper drivers for this machine that the correct steps are 12,800. So I'm gonna update that and now I'm gonna hit test. and that landed right on the mark that I made on the tape. So do keep in mind, especially with the pie burn grip, the newest models, they do have a much higher step capacity. Um, and so that does make a difference in what your settings are gonna be here. I worked with a fellow maker and content creator with his brand new uh, pie burn grip too, and we did find that the steps were much higher up into like the 57,000 is roughly where he was at. So this procedure is what you can do to get everything dialed in. So that way you know that you are basically in, in the ballpark. You are, you're almost on the money for what you need to be doing for your rotary. The next step would be to verify by just running a square. So what we can do is we'll do a fill square here in just a second, just to show that everything is coming out the way that we planned it. All right, so now I'm set up so I can go ahead and run a, it's a half inch by half inch square right here on this tumbler. So some of the other settings, it's really gonna be up to you, um, but I've pulled some general settings to go ahead and make this happen. So let's go ahead and run it, and then we will verify that everything looks right. All right, so here I am looking at our tumbler and I go and I'm measuring from the one inch mark to the one and a half inch and that top to down looks perfect. And then the actual rotary side, you know, I'm measuring from one inch and it actually looks like I am just a little bit shy on that. So in order to really dial this in, I wanna go ahead and I wanna adjust my steps up so that way I can make sure that this is really gonna be right there at that half inch mark. All right, so I ran a couple more tests and upped my uh, steps per rotation just a little bit. And so this is the last one that I have here. So right at that one mark and then to the half. You can see there, it is perfect. 
So obviously these are not optimized settings for a powder coated tumbler because it's not removing all of that. But this is showing me that my rotary is set up and ready to go. So just to recap, we'll go over and let's look at my settings that I've got here. So for this specific rotary, this is what I'm at, you know, so I actually, I did make sure I reversed the rotary direction because it was going the wrong way and creating a gap. Um, and then I ended up at 12,900 steps per rotation for this cup that is this sized. So obviously there is a lot that goes into these items here. This is the split size is how much it turns before how far it will go before it has to turn again. Um, and then the overlap. These are all things that you want to test yourself for the products that you're using and your specific rotary because they will vary. So please test those. Don't just go off of what I have here. But this is how you set up the rotary and this is how you get it going. So that way you are as precise as you can with the designs for whatever cylindrical objects that you're doing. So obviously there's more testing that you need to do to make sure that you've got the right settings and everything set up for the object that you're working on. But this is generally how you get set up, you get started using your Chuck Rotary on the Omni One. And for me, I'm using the Piper and Grip. If you have any other questions or concerns, go ahead, drop them down in the comments. And I will also leave in the description links and discount codes for both the Omni and for the Pyburn Grip. So I hope that this video was helpful for you and please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.